What's up everyone, welcome back to quest mode. Today I'm doing something a bit different. As you can see, I'm making one of my rare on-camera appearances, and the reason for that is I wanted to share my unfiltered and unscripted thoughts about the PlayStation 5 reveal event, and to do that, I'm gonna share my top 10 most exciting reveals of the entire show. Now, this isn't gonna necessarily be the top 10 biggest reveals, it's just gonna be the stuff that I personally was the most excited to see, and to give you some context, I've been playing PlayStation since day one, as you can see by the collection behind me. And so PlayStation holds a special place in my heart, and this event is something that I've been looking forward to for months, if not years. And with all that out of the way, I do want to share my initial first impressions of the entire show, and those are that Sony did a fantastic job putting this show together. I thought this was Sony's best show since they stopped doing E3, and as far as what we saw from their first party studios, I thought we got to see way more than expected. There were some games here that, yes, everybody hoped to see and expected to see, but there were some games that I quite frankly am shocked that Sony was able to fit into this presentation just because they're working on so many games. So uh, that was really nice to see from their first parties. As far as third party AAA releases, there was one surprise in particular that I was really happy about and a lot of stuff that I think looks promising. As far as the more niche or smaller budget indie stuff, I thought that stuff showed really well also. Now, it probably sounds like I'm giving this showcase a perfect 10 out of 10, but I'm most definitely not. First off, there was how Sony mishandled the pitch for Spider-Man Miles Morales. Everybody thought that was a sequel, and rightly so. Well, if you haven't heard, it's not, and I'll get to that. Also, yes, there definitely could have been more gameplay. There could always have been more gameplay. The more events like this I watch, the more I realize I really don't like cinematic trailers that tell us next to nothing about actual gameplay. But other than that, I thought that this was a great show. Uh, just a great um, variety of games that we saw, and it looks like the PlayStation 5 is going to have, a, a, if not a solid launch, a fantastic launch in terms of the games available, and it looks like going forward into 2021, we're going to get a lot of really cool stuff. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into my top 10 most exciting reveals of the 2020 PlayStation 5 reveal event. So at number 10 is one of those indie reveals, and as it happens, it is one of those reveals where we didn't get to see a lot of gameplay, but I do think the game holds a lot of promise, and that's Solar Ash Kingdom by developer Heart Machine. Now, I know if you're paying attention to the indie scene, then you know that this game has already been revealed for other platforms. But the reason that I think you should be really excited about this is that it's by developer Heart Machine, who made Hyper Light Drifter, which, if you're not familiar, is one of the best-reviewed indie games on just about any platform that it's on, and it's a, it's a top-down action RPG, but this looks to be more of a 3D exploration-based platformer or maybe action-adventure game, and those types of games, quite frankly, are right up my alley, and if they can deliver in terms of gameplay, on this game, the same way that they delivered with Hyper Light Drifter, then this game is going to be fantastic. So definitely a game to keep your eye on, and another reason that this game got me excited along with several others in the showcase is that it shows that Sony's not afraid to make some room for some really high quality indie games during the launch or launch window of the PlayStation 5. I don't know about you, but I love a good indie game, and seeing the developer of Hyper Light Drifter get the spotlight during a really high profile showcase like this gives me a lot of hope that we might get some really great indie titles moving forward. Next is a game that might surprise some of you that it's even on this list, but I got genuinely hyped when I saw the reveal for Sackboy A Big Adventure. Now, the reason that it's on this list is because, well, I'm a huge Little Big Planet fan, but every time I played those games, I would say to myself, I wish this was a 3D platformer instead of a 2D or a 2.5D platformer. So 
This game is literally giving me exactly what I've asked for, and this game looks to offer the type of old-school 3D platforming that I love. I mean, my favorite game of all time is Super Mario 64, and this looks to offer a similar style of gameplay. So it makes sense that this would be a game that I'm really looking forward to. The one reason I'm cautiously optimistic is that this is not developed by Media Molecule. This is being developed by Sumo Digital, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. While I do wish that Media Molecule was at the helm, Sumo Digital is who developed Little Big Planet 3, which wasn't a bad game at all. So I do have faith that this could be a really fantastic game, and I hope that it gives us some really fun, maybe even old school 3D platforming infused with some great new ideas that we couldn't have even imagined before we played this game. Coming in at number 8 is a game that I think anyone with their ear to the ground probably saw coming, we just didn't know what it was called or what it was in general, and that's the next game from developer Housemark, and it's called Returnal. Now the reason I think this game has so much potential is that Housemark has, I don't think, ever shipped a bad game. All of their games have been fantastic. Resogun is one of the best games that launched on the PlayStation 4. I, actually, I think it was the best launch game for the PlayStation 4. The catch is that all of their previous games were top-down twin-stick shooters, and this obviously is not. This is a more, it looks like a Dead Space-inspired, over-the-shoulder third-person shooter, and that, to me, sounds awesome. And it did look like they held true to some of their roots. Some of these clips do show what appears to be some bullet hell inspired gameplay. So overall, it's this is gonna be a bit of a wait and see title because it's so different for Housemark. But if the gameplay of Returnal matches the gameplay, not in terms of style, but in terms of quality of the rest of the games that they've ever shipped, then this is gonna be a fantastic game. Definitely not one to overlook. Some of you might be asking, why isn't Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart higher on this list? Ratchet & Clank is one of Sony's marquee first-party franchises, and you're absolutely right. In fact, this was one of the biggest surprises for me of the entire show, but I will say that as far as Sony first-party franchises and 3D platformers, Ratchet & Clank has never been among my favorite franchises for some reason. I never really got into the PlayStation 3 games, and I did play the 2016 Ratchet and & Clank and really liked it, but it wasn't as memorable as I had hoped. So I think that the gaming community at large probably likes the Ratchet & Clank franchise a bit more than I do. But what surprised me most about Rift Apart was that we got to see it at all. This was the first game of the show that had you asked me, I would have never said that we were going to see it. No way, no how. And it just made me feel like Sony was kind of pulling out all the stops. I am interested to see who this female Ratchet lookalike might be, but the thing I'm most excited about as far as Ratchet & Clank goes is that this game is going to look absolutely stunning. The game will utilize ray tracing, and I'm guessing that Sony is planning on using this game as a sort of showcase for the PS5 hardware. And who knows, maybe this will be the game that turns me into a bona fide Ratchet & Clank fan. So I've actually done two versions of this video. One where I thought that Miles Morales was a full-on sequel to 2018 Spider-Man, and this version. Since learning that this isn't Spider-Man 2, it's been a roller coaster. First, a Sony VP was quoted as saying, vaguely, that the game was some sort of expansion. On top of that, there was a rumor going around that this might be some sort of DLC to accompany an also rumored remaster of Spider-Man 2018. In any case, I think many people were rightly disappointed to learn that this was not a full-on sequel, and yes, I do think Sony completely botched their messaging. Thankfully, a developer has clarified things somewhat, and they're not as bad as they first seemed. Apparently, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a standalone PS5 game, but on a smaller scale than Spider-Man 2018. The comparison made, and I do think it's a good one, is that this will be to Spider-Man what Lost Legacy was to Uncharted. In all honesty, that's pretty exciting. Scratch that, it's really exciting. I'm definitely looking forward to swinging through New York as Miles, but still not nearly as much as I was after I first watched this trailer. 
but I don't want to complain too much. I will be buying this when it's released, and I have no doubt that I'm going to love it. Next on the list is a game that I know was on a lot of people's radar, but I was almost completely unaware of, and that's Deathloop. But from what we heard about the game, gameplay-wise, this sounds like it could be right up my alley. It's a, what sounds like, a first-person stealth action rogue light, where you play an assassin, and you have to stealthily work your way through levels, and sometimes it does look like you'll take people on head-on as well, it's not all stealth. But you'll go through levels, and if you don't make it, if you get killed, if this rival assassin of yours ends up taking you out, then you go back to the beginning of the level and you have to try again and again and again. And if each of these levels in the game is a really fun kind of tactical puzzle to figure out, which is kind of what I took away from it, then I would absolutely be into this game. And that's cool because I haven't really gotten into any of Arcane's prior games. I know a lot of people love Dishonored, and I know a lot of people really love Prey but neither of those series ever got their hooks into me. But this game looks like it could be right up my alley, and I just want to say this trailer was stylish as hell. I loved watching it. The music got me going. So maybe there's a little bit of that uh, influence going on here, but I do think that from the way they described the game, the gameplay uh, in the hands of Arcane Studio could be fantastic. Next on the list is Resident Evil 8, and this is another game like Ratchet & Clank that I had absolutely zero expectations of seeing. I mean, we just got Resident Evil 3 Remake, and it was fantastic, and you're telling me that we already get to see the next mainline entry in the series, and that it's coming out in 2021? Awesome. And one thing I do have to be honest about is one reason this game isn't even higher on this list is that I'm partial to the third-person gameplay of the older Resident Evil games, and I wasn't a huge fan of the shift to the first-person perspective in Resident Evil 7. But that's not to say that Resident Evil 7 was a bad game. It was fantastic, and Capcom is on fire with this series. They've released three fantastic games in a row. And another thing I was excited about with this game is at times it almost, at towards the end of the trailer, it almost had a Castlevania-esque aesthetic, which I think could be really, really cool. I like it better than the aesthetic of Resident Evil 7, which just seemed kind of muddy and, and just dirty to me. I like this more gothic look, uh, but we'll see where they take it. Resident Evil has definitely taken some swerves uh, over the years, and I'm confident based on the last three games in the series that this is going to be another fantastic game. Coming in at number three is the reveal of the actual PlayStation 5 console. And I gotta say, this is the part of the show that I actually found myself getting a little emotional when I realized, okay, this is it. We're actually gonna see what the next PlayStation looks like. And it did not disappoint. I think that it's gorgeous, and that was a huge relief for me because I was not impressed with the design of the DualSense controller. I think it looks complicated and a bit busy, but the PlayStation 5 itself is very much simplified. I love how the two white panels come together to form that subtle V shape uh, for the number five, or at least that's how I interpreted it. It does look like it's ventilated from top to bottom, but you can't really tell just by looking at it. And all that said, what surprised me the most, and I'm sure it's what surprised everyone the most, is that Sony decided to make and reveal two models, the base version and then the discless version, which I think is incredibly smart for Sony to do that. We've all heard the speculation that the PlayStation 5 could cost $500 and maybe even more. Me personally, I think they should go through hell and high water to price it at $500 or less. But if it is more, or even if it's at that, that's a lot of money, having the second version that's obviously going to be less expensive will take some of the sting away for some people. And Sony, please don't make it just $50 cheaper. Please make this discless model at least $100 less expensive than the base version. And I think that's a great uh, way to also stay competitive with Xbox, who also is planning, at least so we've heard, is planning on having two models of their console. So I think it was an incredibly smart reveal, and I do think that it's a, a beautiful console. I really have no qualms here. Mm -hmm. 
never in a thousand years would I have imagined that I would put Hitman 3 as my second most hyped reveal of a PlayStation 5 reveal event that was, quite honestly, one of the better console reveals that I can remember. But here we are, and yes, Hitman 3 is indeed my second most hyped reveal of the show, and for two reasons. The first is the sheer surprise factor. Just like Resident Evil 8 or Ratchet and Clank, I had no clue that we would get to see this game, even though I, I know it was actually no secret that the studio behind Hitman was working on a new game, I just didn't expect to see it at this particular showcase. And second, and most importantly, I absolutely fell in love with this series with the most recent two entries. I never got into the series on the PlayStation 2, but the reboot and its sequel are some of my favorite games of the entire generation. If you're a fan of sandbox gameplay or stealth gameplay, and obviously if you're a fan of both, you owe it to yourself to play the Hitman games. I think it's one of the most underrated franchises of the generation, and the, the amount of sheer options that the game puts in front of you to take out your targets. If you want to assassinate your target by poisoning their drink, you can. If you want to drop a chandelier on their head, you can. If you want to electrocute them, you can. If you just want to walk up and shoot them, you can do that too. Wouldn't recommend it. But you can just do any, you can, you can tackle your challenges literally any way you want in these games and it's just so much fun. So I've blabbered on enough about the Hitman games. You know that I love them now. Definitely excited for Hitman 3, and uh, yeah, one of my biggest surprises of the show. Now that we know that Spider-Man is an expansion of some kind and not a full-on sequel, it should come as no surprise that my most hyped announcement of the entire show is Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Zero Dawn is my single favorite PlayStation 4 exclusive of all time, and while it's the combat that drew me into that game, it's the locations that I'm most excited about in Forbidden West. For one, we're headed to the West Coast, where we'll get to visit my old stomping grounds, San Francisco. Second, the underwater environments look amazing, and I'm also wondering about this dragon and what appears to be this Chinese writing. Could we possibly visit another continent? Maybe Gorilla is just saving that for a future reveal. And one note is that the story of this game looks actually pretty cool. It looks like you'll be saving organic wildlife from either the robotic creatures or some form of the corruption from the original game. And if I'm remembering correctly, organic wildlife wasn't even around in the original game, or am I wrong about that? Let me know in the comments, and with that, I want to say that the Spider-Man debacle aside, I thought this was a really awesome showcase, and it did indeed make me even more excited for the PlayStation 5. And with that, I want to thank you for watching the entire video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, and if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And if you're new to the channel, I highly recommend you check out one of my ultimate previews on the screen now, where I look at everything we know about the biggest upcoming games. If you want to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you can find me on both at Games. And finally, I want to remind everyone to never stop questing.